presentation, just the standard one. Good morning. I am Catherine Matthews with the OBIC Bioproducts Innovation Center, and thank you for joining the OBIC Bioproducts Network's latest presentation as a part of our Bioproducts Commercialization Webinar Series. Today's webinar will cover results from a two-year nationwide survey on bioproducts. We are excited to have a leader in the marketing and research field presenting to us today. Before we start the program, let me highlight two quick logistical issues. First, if you have not already done so, please be sure that your audio connection is on mute to reduce audio interference and feedback. Second, if you would like to ask a question of our speaker, we will have a few minutes of Q&A after the presentation is complete. Please submit your questions directly to me, either via the chat box on the right-hand side of the screen or via email to max at maximumcq.com, and we will pass your question on to our speaker. And with that, let us begin our program by introducing our distinguished speaker for the morning, David Schwantes, CEO of B4 Branding and consultant for OBIC Bioproducts Innovation Center. David Schwantes is a researcher trapped in a marketer's body. He brings more than 30 years of marketing and teaching to B4 Branding, a Columbus, Ohio-based consultancy and chief experience officer. Schwantes has worked in both corporate and agency settings, holding senior management positions with Worthington Foods, Morningstar Farms, Lord Sullivan and Yoder Advertising, and Falgren Mortine before launching B4 Branding in 2003. His experience includes marketing research, strategic planning, brand building, brand equity management, retail sales, and marketing communications. He has also taught a wide variety of courses in marketing, research, and consumer behavior, both full and part-time at Walla Walla College, Franklin University, the University of Oregon, and Capital University, where he's currently director of their MBA program. He is also a skilled interviewer, having worked as a reporter for daily newspapers and magazines. Through B4 Branding, Schwantes has conducted research and marketing strategy for clients in the manufacturing, packaged goods, retail, finance, technology, healthcare, nonprofit, and service sectors. A partial listing of his clients include the American Legion, Cooper Tires, Kroger Company, McDonald's Restaurants, Napa Auto Parts, Nationwide Insurance, Ohio Lottery, Procter & Gamble, United Bank, and Visit Florida. And with that, Take it away. <laughs> Great. Thank you, Catherine. Good morning, all. It's a pleasure to be with you today. And I appreciate the invitation to share with the group uh, some of the key findings from our 2014 Survey of Consumer Attitudes. Uh, this is the second year that uh, we have conducted this study. So what I'm going to be sharing with you are uh, some comparisons to the benchmark from 2013 as well as uh, talking about a couple of areas where we tweak the survey uh, to uh, either do a little bit deeper dive or to come up with uh, perhaps a little bit more consumer-friendly language. The uh, survey was based on a sample yielding 800 respondents uh, conducted online during July of this year. The uh, sample uh, was drawn from a nationally representative group of adults between the ages of 18 and 74 years of age. We were uh, seeking uh, an equal mix of males and females. And really the only criteria in terms of being included in this database was that they had made some purchase from a grocery or mass merchandise re retailer within the past 30 days. So we were really trying to get a pretty broad definition of the marketplace to be able to measure things like awareness, uh, attitudes, and use of bio-based products. In addition to the 600 nationally representative respondents, we also pulled a separate sample from Ohio, trying to make comparisons as to whether a agriculturally focused state like Ohio had a different perspective of bio-based, and also as we're going forward, see what kind of impact OBIC and other local initiatives might have in terms of Ohio. Um, one significant change from our 2013 survey was that last year we also specifically targeted a segment of 200 consumers nationally that identified themselves as being eco-friendly. 
Um, I'm going to come back and refer to that in a few minutes, but at least I wanted to uh, uh, make uh, the audience aware of uh, the fact that we changed the composition just slightly this year. Um, the next uh, slide is just a very quick overview in terms of some of the characteristics of the respondents. I'm not going to spend a lot of time uh, detailing this particular slide, but uh, indicative of the fact that we did have a good representation in terms of gender mix as well as age ranges. Uh, throughout the slides, as you'll be seeing, I've color-coded them. Uh, anything that is in blue is indicative of our national audience of 600 respondents, anything in red would be indicative of that audience that is Ohio specific. Also where possible, I will include comparisons between the 2013 study and what we've seen in 2014. A, a geographic perspective on a national basis, we wanted to make sure that we had fairly good representation. Uh, across uh, the U.S. and you'll see here the breakout of percentages uh, by region. A little bit more heavily skewed toward the south, but still I would say overall uh, a good representation of a national audience. And then within uh, the state of Ohio, uh, again skewing a little bit more heavily toward northeastern Ohio, but uh, again that would uh, track fairly consistently with where you have the population centers in Ohio. So I think both from a demographic perspective and from a geographic perspective, I feel pretty comfortable that this is a uh, representative group that we're hearing from and uh, the views that they represent on uh, bio-based products and packaging are pretty indicative of what we're seeing uh, in the consumer marketplace. Um, one of the questions that we had asked initially last year was for respondents to indicate their level of interest or concern in purchasing what they consider to be environmentally friendly products. Now as I said, we did not include this specific screener last year because we wanted to kind of see what was the national or just kind of the, the natural distribution in our national audience of those who had some concern in terms of buying environmentally friendly products. What I find interesting, and if you look at the green column on the far right, those were the percentages of people from last year's survey that uh, were part of that specific segment that we screened for in terms of making environmentally friendly purchases. And you had roughly about 87% of that eco-friendly audience indicating that they occasionally or frequently purchased uh, environmentally friendly products. We didn't screen this year, but I find fascinating the fact that the distribution and the response to this question was very close in terms of both the national and the audio, uh, Ohio audiences, uh, which would suggest to me that perhaps making eco-friendly purchases is becoming a little bit more mainstream in terms of the marketplace, willing to try and use what they would consider eco-friendly products. Now, again, keep in mind this is their own you know, internal definition of what they consider to be eco-friendly, but nonetheless, there seems to be a fairly high level of interest or concern about the purchases that they're making. The uh, structure of the survey was that we started out with a, a series of questions that were intended to measure unaided levels of awareness, purchase, and familiarity with the bio-based category. Uh, we wanted to really kind of see what type of perspectives or what type of perceptions consumers brought with them into the marketplace about bio-based. Were they aware of it? If they were, what was the level of familiarity? And were they making purchases of products, again, that they considered to be bio-based? So this initial slide here uh, gives them an opportunity to list in an open-ended question up to three such products that they are aware of that they would consider to be bio-based. So we started first of all those that claim some awareness of bio-based and you see a pretty high percentage there, 48 percent of our national sample claim to be aware of bio-based products. However, when you start drilling down, you had only 15 percent that could call recall a category specific reference to a bio-based product like a health care product or uh, a home cleaning product or something of that. 
And then when it came down to what specific brands do you recall, you'll see that the responses there were in single digits. So my take on this uh, progression in terms of unaided awareness is there seems to be an interest or kind of a vague familiarity with uh, the category or the desire to want to know about bio-based products, but the reality is there's still not a lot of concrete brand-specific awareness of bio-based yet in the market. And then we got into that a little bit further with a separate question where we gave people a scale from one to seven, asking them to rate uh, their degree of familiarity with bio-based products or packaging. And as you see in the bottom right corner of this particular slide, uh, no one indicated a strong familiarity with bio Only half of our respondents indicated virtually no familiarity with bio -based. My interpretation is this unaided awareness would be there seems to be an interest or a desire. They seem to think that this is something they should be doing, but clearly it's not something that they have begun to do yet. Uh, the next slide we asked them then in terms of any unaided or unprompted purchases of bio-based. And we see kind of a similar dynamic taking place here. Again, uh, a significantly higher percentage claiming to have purchased what they would perceive to be a bio-based product. Again, drilling down to what specific categories will those purchases in. We see a significant fall off in terms of the ability to associate that with specific categories. And then as it gets down to brand specific uh, knowledge of the products that they might have purchased, um, we see again a, a, another drop off there. I do find it interesting though that even though these numbers are small, it was a significant increase from those in last year's study, 4%, who were able to name a specific branded bio-based product that they claim that they had purchased as opposed to about 13% this year indicating that degree of uh, purchase of bio-based. When we got into looking at what specific categories they claim to be purchasing bio-based in, you see uh, products like household cleaners that seem to be uh, by far the most likely types of categories that they associated with bio-based. That was up significantly over the past year, both in our national sample as well as our Ohio sample. But after the household cleaners, again, the uh, levels of claim purchase tend to drop off pretty dramatically. Um, I have to admit, I don't know entirely what's driving that increase in uh, claim purchase of household cleaners over the past year, but uh, clearly they must be getting some messages from the marketplace that would lead them to consider and actually try uh, what they would perceive to be bio-based in that household cleaner category. We then asked them to uh, indicate, again, uh, specific names of brands or products that they had purchased. Again, this was based upon their own individual recall, their own individual perceptions of what they consider to be bio-based or not. The numbers that we see represented on these slides are just the actual number of, of mentions. These are not percentages. So under the national audience, for example, Simple Green, uh, 15 uh, respondents nationally mentioned that by name or by brand. Uh, seventh Generation had about 11 specific mentions. Uh, Method, Ecos, Burt's Bees also had multiple uh, mentions in terms of uh, recognition of brands that people purchased that they associated with bio-based. In Ohio, we saw some of the same kinds of brands showing up again, Simple Green and Seventh Generation by far being the two that were most likely to be top of mind in terms of bio-based brands. Um, further, we asked those who had made a purchase of a bio-based product kind of their overall perception of that product compared to the products that they might normally use for a particular functional application. We didn't ask this question last year, so we can't provide a comparison, but uh, I think it is interesting that you have uh, essentially 88% of the respondents indicating that uh, they felt that the bio-based products that they used 
were as good as or better than the products that they were intended to replace. So again, this would suggest to me that um, there's encouraging signs of uh, consumers' willingness to try bio-based if it seems to offer the right value proposition in terms of something that will help them address a specific want or need and if they feel that they're not giving up performance in some form or fashion. Um, another question we asked this year that we did not include in our 2013 baseline is, again, those individuals who had purchased bio-based products, where did they purchase them? And not surprisingly, the vast majority indicated that they were going to uh, mainstream retailers like uh, the Walmarts, uh, Targets, uh, grocery store chains, and the like. Uh, we'll <laughs> talk a little bit more about this uh, later in the survey because we were curious as to uh, where people would be willing to go in terms of find and purchase bio-based products. But uh, my early read on this would suggest that, you know what, people want to find bio-based in the mainstream. They're not really going to go through a huge sacrifice or um, try to have to uh, go through some inconvenient process to find bio-based. Still looking to understand kind of the perceptions or the knowledge that consumers brought with them into this market, uh, we asked uh, consumers to define, or the respondents rather in the survey to define, well, what in your own words is a bio-based product? And then we coded their open-ended responses, and uh, some of the, the phrases or some of the reference that uh, were most prevalent in terms of their definition of bio-based included uh, terms like natural, environmentally safe, biodegradable, uh, renewable, and the like. You'll note at the bottom of the screen that about 28% said, I don't know. I'm not able to come up with any definition or any words that I would associate with bio-based. But to me, one of the most significant findings of the study overall is if you compare the don't knows in 2014 versus the don't knows in 2013, you'll see that there's been a huge drop-off in terms of those who claim not to have any awareness or familiarity or be able to define what bio-based is. So this would suggest to me that there is some in terms of consumers being more familiar with and having kind of a working understanding of bio-based and perhaps some of the reasons why they might be interested in bio-based. Last question before we got into uh, some prompted responses. Again, we asked these consumers what they felt were the primary benefits from using bio-based. Again, these were unprompted responses. Uh, you'll notice if you add the columns up that uh, they do add up to more than 100% because they had the opportunity to uh, supply multiple uh, comments or responses to this question. But uh, by far, clearly, uh, consumers tended to perceive the benefits of bio-based within the context of being better for the environment, fewer toxins, less waste, and the like. So almost inevitably, they saw this as, again, part of uh, uh, an environmental initiative, helping them to um, be good stewards of the environment, as well as buying products that provide the same functionality as what they may have been using previously. Okay, so here I'm gonna turn the corner and uh, move from unaided responses or top of mind comments from our respondents and get into um, some prompted responses where we have provided a definition of bio-based as well as then asking them their responses to uh, prompts or uh, listed of products that uh, may fit in this particular category. So starting with the definition of bio-based, and this is one area where, again, we made a significant change in this year's survey uh, versus what uh, took place in 2013. The definition that we used for bio-based, uh, you'll see here on the slide uh, number 19 that should be on your screen. And it says, bio-based products and packaging are made from agricultural resources such as soy, corn, and other renewable plant-based materials. 
These sustainable solutions provide consumers with smart, practical choices, assuring them of improved environmental well-being without compromising the performance of products used in everyday lives. Um, this definition was intended to be uh, more consumer friendly than the definition that had been used last year. Uh, we went through, quite honestly, a, a pretty extensive process this last fall within OBIC trying to come up with uh, uh, a communication or a platform that would make it a little bit easier for consumers to uh, grasp not only what bio-based is, but why it's important or relevant to them. Uh, for comparison's sake, and I don't have this slide, but uh, the definition that we used in 2013 was essentially the USDA's definition of bio-based, which uh, you know, said these were products and packaging made from non-food items derived from renewable, domestic agricultural, aquaculture, or forest materials, including plant, animal, and marine sources, or biological waste from household animals or food production. Um, you know, that was a very legalese kind of a definition last year, and certainly we saw last year that people were having a hard time kind of grasping what did that mean and why is that relevant to me as, as an individual consumer. So that kind of drove the initiative within OBIC to begin to frame, uh, again, a definition of bio-based that we feel uh, would be much more reflective of a consumer's point of view. So given that definition that was shared with the respondents to our survey, we then began to ask them questions about, well, what's your takeaway? So uh, we said, in your own words, what do you consider the most important takeaway from this definition of bio-based? Again, uh, giving them an opportunity to respond uh, uh, in an open-ended fashion. And you'll note that the largest percentage um, frame this in the context of being environmentally better as a huge takeaway. Uh, in fact, uh, those that made some reference to environmental uh, benefits increased dramatically from our 2013 survey from 8% to 27% this year. Now, the second uh, highest response was that of renewable resources. And in some ways, it may look like that has been a fall off from 2013. We had 40% of respondents last year uh, indicating the renewability of resources as something that was a key takeaway from that definition. That had dropped to 18% this uh, current year. Uh, my interpretation of that is if you go back and you read the USDA definition of bio-based, um, Renewable is one of the few consumer-friendly words that actually stands out from that definition last year. A lot of people are getting lost in words like aquaculture or uh, biological waste, um, and consequently it was kind of taking them away from uh, a consumer-friendly understanding. And nowhere in, in the USDA definition does it talk about any of the uh, environmental benefits that uh, would be associated with bio-based. So I think that's why we've seen a, a pretty fundamental shift in terms of people's takeaway or understanding of this definition to move uh, from exclusively focusing on renewability to looking at it more from a, a broader perspective of the environment. You'll also see some increases in terms of things like um, sustainability, uh, saw a significant increase as, as part of the takeaway from many of these individuals. So um, I guess part of my interpretation of this is I feel like we, we have achieved uh, some steps in the right direction in providing language that uh, hopefully will help what we're talking about when we refer to bio-based products bio-based packaging. And we see a little bit more of a, a reflection of that when I pull some of uh, from the uh, the Hello? survey, excuse me, uh, mute the uh, phone for this, please. Is all check that you have muted your phone. There's no Thank you. Okay, moving forward. Um, so some of the takeaway, the verbatim responses from our national sample, they gravitated toward things like 
improved environmental well-being without compromising performance. Uh, the added bonus of doing good for the earth, uh, recognition that these were sourced uh, from agricultural materials like soy corn and other renewable plant-based, uh, helping farmers as well as helping the environment, and uh, less harm to everyone and everything. And if we take a look at verbatims from those in our Ohio sample, again, we see uh, similar kinds of uh, uh, cognition or takeaway, better for the environment, renewable materials, uh, not compromising the performance of products, renewability, uh, made from common farming materials, plant-based, and the like. So I think the key points we were trying to get away, uh, get a, excuse me, across in that the definition were certainly part of the takeaways in terms of the uh, environmental benefits, the renewability, the sustainability, and uh, the fact that they're sourced from uh, plant-based materials. Um, continuing on in terms of uh, measuring aided responses, and we've got a couple of slides here where we look at uh, aided awareness as well as uh, prompted purchase. And we gave them a list of uh, items that uh, either were using bio-based components or were packaged in bio-based materials. And so among the ones that had the highest levels of indicated awareness, we saw things like uh, Burt's Bees, uh, Green Works, Seventh Generation, in terms of products, uh, Sunchips packaging, the uh, plant-based Dasani bottles. Um, again, pretty high levels of, of awareness and significantly higher than what we saw from an unprompted or unaided measure. So there was almost this kind of surprise realization of products that people were already using. You mean those have a bio-based component? And I think there's, there's clearly opportunity to do a better job of educating consumers, not only what to look for, but to realize that some of the products that may be commonly used do have a bio-based component, and hopefully from that begin to perpetuate kind of a ripple effect, encouraging people to look for other health and beauty aid products or other packaging materials that may have a bio-based component. Uh, in terms of unprompted, excuse me, prompted rather purchase, uh, again, these same items uh, were part of the list that we asked people to indicate purchase. Um, again, among the highest in terms of those that they'd indicated some degree of purchase, again, uh, health and beauty aids like Burt's Bees, Sunchips packaging, Greenworks, uh, the Coke and Dasani bottles, seventh generation and the like. Overall, you seem to uh, recognize that there seemed to be a lot more uh, willingness to purchase uh, what I would categorize as consumable items as opposed to the more durable goods like paints and carpeting and the like. And, and part of that may be just the fact that there's a lower threshold of cost in terms of trying something like a health and beauty aid or a household product as opposed to investing something that is going to be on your walls for a number of years or be on your floor like carpeting. But again, my anticipation would be as we get people to start using some of the more common uh, consumable items like the health and beauty aids and uh, household products, that that, again, is going to help to perpetuate the ripple effect so that they would be more mindful of and willing to try durable goods that would have benefits associated with bio-based. Obviously, if they're making a purchase, do they feel like the purchase that they're making is uh, resulting in some type of a difference. In other words, do they feel good about what they're buying? And uh, the overwhelming percentage here said, yes, yeah, 60% indicated that um, they felt like uh, bio-based, um, you know, gave them a reason to, to make a purchase, um, gave them a reason to buy, and that uh, as a result, they were making some type of a positive difference in terms of those purchase decisions. In terms of uh, the benefits that they associated with bio-based, you recall earlier we gave them an un unaided opportunity to uh, indicate uh, the influence or the motivation for 
uh, bio-based uh, products and packaging. Here we gave them a list of benefits, the benefits that you see on the screen, like environmental sustainability, opportunities for recycling, reducing dependency on foreign oil, uh, boosting the American economy and the like, and then uh, gave them the opportunity to rank these benefits. It was a forced ranking, so they would rank these from one to six, uh, one being those of uh, greatest importance in terms of the benefits that they would associate with bio-based down to six being the least important. And then the percentages that you see on the screen here on slide 26, these were the percentages that uh, respondents ranked either number one or number two in importance or the uh, influence in terms of benefits. Uh, again, not surprisingly, uh, consumers send, tend to frame this in terms of uh, environmental benefits like the environmental sustainability or opportunities for recycling significantly lower in this hierarchy of influences in terms of bio-based would be more of the economic or political reasons like reducing oil dependency, boosting the American economy, or supporting, supporting farm incomes. In thinking of the motivation to look for and purchase bio-based, um, we were kind of curious as to whether they were truly discerning that bio-based was different than just simply environmentally friendly or green products. So we first of all asked them a question as to, you know, um, do you see this being different? In other words, a bio-based product from a green product. And then we took and coded their open-ended responses. And you'll note that uh, even though about 40% claim that uh, they felt that uh, green and bio-based were essentially the same, if you look at the second uh, set of graphs there that say different, uh, to me I think this is an also an interesting observation in that you went from 20% of respondents in last year's survey to 26% indicating some awareness that they do see a difference. Um, so I think that um, people are beginning to get the message, they're beginning to have a little bit more uh, awareness and cognition that bio-based is not just something to be lumped in with the overall green initiative or that it is a subset within the overall uh, category of environmentally friendly products. Drilling down into that, we uh, took a look at some verbatims, uh, again, where they would indicate awareness or a perception that green is indeed uh, a different category or that bio-based is something that is not necessarily equivalent to green. So you see some of the verbatims here on slide uh, number 28, uh, this uh, coming from the um, representative of the national sample. Uh, we see comments here like uh, it assures the effectiveness of the product if it's bio-based. Uh, bio-based is more about the composition of the product. Bio-based is from the earth and goes back to the earth. Uh, bio-based refers to products from biological resources. And then also the complaint at the bottom of this that green is such a vague term without a standard definition. People seem to hire, see a, or recognize a higher standard uh, when they refer to something as bio-based as opposed simply to green. <coughs> and with our Ohio sample, uh, again, we tend to see uh, similar um, distinctions or in the consumer's mind a differentiation between bio-based and green. You know, bio-based products are made from plant-based materials. They're renewable. Uh, bio-based is based on natural ingredients. Um, green products are made from recycled materials but are not necessarily plant-based. And then again at the bottom, some of the concerns that uh, we heard from the national audience. You know, green is uh, an unspecific term. It could be a buzzword. Bio-based is more specific. And uh, green is a vague term with no standardized meaning. And I, th I think we do see in the marketplace today um, some uh, manifestations of uh, what's been referred to as greenwashing 
Um, I think, however, uh, bio-based, people see that as something that does have a clear distinction or definition and does represent kind of a higher level of, uh, of expectation. Uh, to me, it's a little bit uh, similar to what I saw about 20 years ago. I worked for a number of years in the uh, the natural products or natural foods category, and uh, we saw a distinction emerge in the marketplace between organic items versus just simply natural items. And I think that's what appears to be happening here with bio bases, that people are recognizing that it is somewhat of a higher quality, higher standard in terms of environmental uh, sustainability and stewardship. Um, in terms of levels of interest in purchasing bio-based bio items, um, again, this is based on a seven-point rating scale indicating the likelihood of their willingness to purchase bio-based products or items packaged in bio-based packaging. <clears throat> and we saw about one out of three respondents indicating a fairly high level. This were the top two boxes on the seven-point scale. Pretty high level of interest in either bio-based products or bio-based packaging. Now, this was not a significant shift from last year, uh, but it was a shift in the positive direction and uh, I think does, again, indicate um, opportunities in the marketplace to be able to educate consumers as to the benefits of bio-based and to provide the items to them that would fit with their perceptions of bio-based. We then uh, asked about specific categories, uh, asking them to rate, again, using a seven-point scale. Their levels of in terms of buying bio-based products within these specific categories. And you'll note that uh, the uh, indication of strong interest uh, in, increased uh, significantly uh, when they began to frame bio-based or think of them in a particular category like household cleaners, laundry products, hand sanitizers, and the like. I think um, that knowledge of um, if we give people a frame of reference in terms of what are some of the uses of bio-base, bio-base is used in household cleaners, bio-base is used in laundry products, bio-base is used in hand sanitizers or office supplies, that increases their level of interest and willingness to purchase as opposed to thinking of bio-base just in a very vague, generic context. Um, Obviously, there's uh, been a lot of discussion in recent years about the green premium, uh, consumers' willingness to pay more for environmentally friendly products, or in this instance, bio-based products. So we measured that with a series of questions, trying to indicate what were some of the thresholds in terms of people's willingness to pay a higher price point for a bio-based product, assuming comparable performance. And uh, what I found interesting was that about two-thirds of our respondents, both uh, nationally and locally, indicated a willingness to pay at least 5% more for bio-based. And about one in three indicated a willingness to pay 10% or more for bio-based. Now, those percentages were pretty comparable to what we saw in last year's survey. But I, I find this encouraging and interesting in large part that you've got roughly the same percentage of consumers saying, I would be willing to pay 10% more for bio-based with equal functionality as opposed to those at the bottom of this chart saying, I wouldn't be willing to pay any more. So to me, this is indicative of, I think, again, an interest or a willingness on the consumer's part to invest or pay a little bit higher price for the benefits that they would associate with bio-based. And I think the most significant shift that you see here is that group that indicated that they would be willing to pay 20% or more for an equivalent bio-based product. That increased dramatically from what we saw in 2013, nationally from 14 to 21%, and within Ohio from 6 to 21%. So you do have an indication of, of people's um, 
uh, willingness to invest in what they would perceive to be acceptable quality bio-based products. Um, we then took a look at categories. Is there more sensitivity or less sensitivity in certain categories? Again, this was a question that was added for this year we didn't have in last year, so I can't provide a comparison. Um, this perhaps didn't show a whole lot of differentiation between price sensitivity of uh, household cleaners versus price sensitivity to home improvement items. Uh, these percentages are indicative of the respondents who indicated that they would be willing to pay at least 10% or more for a bio-based item. You had about 40% saying, yes, I'd pay 10% or more in household cleaners, about 34% saying, yes, I'd be willing to pay more for home improvement products of 10% or more. Um, and I guess my interpretation of this would be, as I mentioned earlier, there's a bit less risk in terms of spending several dollars on a household cleaner as opposed to spending several hundred dollars on a bio-based carpet or bio-based wall cover. Um, where do people expect to find bio-based? Uh, clearly, they expect to find bio-based products in the mass market. 75% indicating they expect to find it at mass merchandisers or supermarkets, uh, only about 10% uh, indicating that they'd be willing to go through the special effort of trying to find bio-based at some type of specialty retailer or making those purchases online. So my interpretation is if we're going to be successful with bio-based, it's going to have to be through the mass market. It's going to have to be getting the products on the shelves of the mass merchandisers and the supermarkets. And from my marketing perspective, I think this is really the key of unlocking the um, consumer side of bio-based. Consumers aren't going to go through some extraordinary effort. They expect to be able to find it on the shelf. But I think one of the challenges is, is creating a sufficient mass or maybe even a special section within these uh, grocery stores and mass merchandisers where people will be able to go to find bio-based items. Um, one of the last questions that we asked is relating to the um, bio-preferred brand or logo identity. And um, you will note that, uh, you know, the identity associated with bio-based was fairly low, only about one out of five um, respondents indicating uh, aided awareness or aided recognition of uh, the bio-preferred logo. Uh, compared to a baseline of about 80% of respondents who indicated that they had seen or had some familiarity with the, the little uh, recyclability uh, arrows. Um, so obviously there's a ways to go with um, trying to increase recognition of the bio-based or the bio-preferred um, logo or identity. But on the other hand, if you compare bio-based to some of the other uh, indicators of environmental um, benefit like the green seal or the sustainability logo, um, you know, bio bases are not far behind them. So again, I think there's an opportunity overall to increase visibility and gain consumer awareness of these designations of environmentally friendly products. Um, the last part of the survey, we then asked respondents as to uh, their recommendations. What would lead you to greater consideration or consideration of more bio-based products and packaging? And uh, you see here again in several of the verbatim responses, a lot of it goes back to awareness and education. You know, what do I look for? Tell me what to look for. Tell me where to find it. Let me know where it's available. Yes, there were a few uh, responses uh, uh, suggesting that uh, the products are going to have to be competitively priced. But again, a price that they would say competitively is about, at least according to the one respondent, about 10 to 15 percent within the price of regular similar products. Um, so again, I don't think we have to be at parity with the products that BioBase is intended to replace, but I think we're going to have to be within that range of probably about 10%. Um, another suggestion was that of the opportunity to sample. So if we had small 
uh, affordable samples that people could try, see the performance as well as then the recognized benefit, uh, that would be of something that would help them consider buying more. And then uh, within our Ohio sample, again, we saw similar kinds of responses, uh, the importance of education, better advertising, more education, uh, consumer engagement, signage in the stores, letting people know what to look for or calling their attention to BioBase, making it easy to distinguish the visibility uh, and the like. So uh, what I find kind of interesting overall is I think that we're beginning to turn the corner in terms of has been focused on technology, has been focused on finding business-to-business -business partners uh, in terms of their willingness to uh, develop products that are bio-based. But I think uh, this uh, 2004, or excuse me, 2014 uh, survey would begin to suggest that consumers are starting to get the message. There's a long way to go, but at least it suggests to me that there's opportunity to begin to educate, to begin to do more with the consumers, to try to generate more pull in terms of giving consumers reasons to look for and willingness to purchase bio-based. So that's about as far as I'm going to go with uh, uh, sharing the slides uh, for today. Um, I would be happy to respond to questions that you have or questions that have already been submitted or to try to provide uh, further pr clarification on uh, what I've shared with you. In the interest of time, let's wrap up here. I would like to thank our speaker, David Schwantes, for presenting this morning, and we would also like to thank all of you who have joined us as participants. Mr. Schwantes will be further discussing these survey results and their implications at Bioproducts World Showcase in Columbus, Ohio on October 7th at 10.45 a.m. If you are not yet a member of OBIC Bioproduct Network, we encourage you to visit our website to find out more and to download a membership application. Membership in the OBIC Bioproduct Network will ensure your access to great programming opportunities such as our networking events and annual meetings and will help you keep you and your company at the forefront of happenings in the bioproduct industry. Again, thank you for participating in today's webinar, and we look forward to having you in Columbus on October 5th through 8th.